Good morning, folks. Good morning. And so we're at Friday, and I have to do my duty, which is um, share my thoughts and uh, give tribute to a musician who has um, <clears throat> affected my life very positively, but is not well known online. Uh, a couple days ago, it was uh, I found out that the guitarist Phil Phil Miller from England, who um, was part of the Canterbury School of Musicians, uh, has died. Um, we're at that, we're, 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 you know, the, the years are passing by. Apparently he was about 70 years old. You know, I can still remember, because music is such an important part of our um, growing up, I still remember vividly thinking about now, back then, when I was 17 and 18, musing about what's it going to be like? Will we still be here, you know, when we're 15, 60 years old? What will music be like, you know? Um, what's it going to be like when people start to pass away, which has been going on? But I used to think about this as a kid because the music was so important to me. Phil Miller is not a household name. He first came to my attention through being in the band... Um, I'm not sure which came first for me. Um, probably Matching Mole. Probably first heard him with uh, Robert Wyatt's Matching Mole. And um, <clears throat> this was right when um, Robert Wyatt basically got kicked out of Soft Machine. <clears throat> and this first album is kind of a brooding um, tone poem, I would call. The second album, Matching Most Little Red Record, is some kind of strange, ma I was going to say masterpiece. No, this is just a really significant album, okay? That's Phil right there, up at the top. He wrote the song God Song on here, and if you know the song, you know it's just a really, really wonderful piece of music, as well as the words. The thing about Phil that I really liked is this, and... Um, I'm going to try to remember all my thoughts. I'll forget some, but I hate racism, okay? This is important to put in here. I hate racism. I actually get grief at times. People wondering why I don't show more black music. It's not the point. What the point is showing you what I love as a black child in racist Nebraska, even though white people were cruel to me. I found, um, I found solace in the music. It wasn't about the color of their skin, it's about what they're doing, which took me away and takes me away from the current, you know, the, the world I'm surrounded by, which in many ways is not pleasant. With all that said, part of what I really liked about Phil Miller's guitar playing is that there's no blues in it and that he is the sort of player who would think as he played and you could hear it, you could hear him trying to construct his thoughts as he's going. Just notice my... Okay, all right. You can, you, you can hear him constructing as he goes, which is refreshing. And uh, he had a very <clears throat> angular style. Once, you, once he started soloing, Usually within a couple of notes, you, t you know it's Phil Miller. He was also in the band, m amazing band, National Health, the whole Canterbury School. See, this music in many ways saved my life. I found this expression. I knew that the rock that I was listening to with my friends and the, the uh, funk that I was listening to with my friends and family, I loved it, but I needed music that helped me to define a space of my own where I could feel okay. And this is the music that has done it more than, any, probably more than any other music in my life, has been the Canterbury School of Music. Soft Machine, Caravan, all of that music, okay? Speaking of that, probably again one of the first times I heard Phil Miller on guitar is his guest spot on this Caravan album, Waterloo Lily. Um, this is um, one of their jazzier albums, and he plays a great solo on the song Nothing At All on here. And he stands out. You know right away it's not Pie Hastings. 
But even beyond that, it's like, that's Phil Miller. He was, and then after, so there was National Health. They did the second album of Cues and Cures. This, I think, is fantastic. Okay, I mean, you want to, the first one is good. The first one is good, but this is one where it's like, boy, if they could have kept this going, masterful um, new forms of new sounds I don't know any other records that sound like this fantastic Square for Maud then one more National Health Album DS Alcoda Phil Miller um, figures um, highly on this album He had a band for many years called In Cahoots. I don't have any of the records, but I have the first Phil Miller solo album, excuse me, Cutting Both Ways. Again, using that hotbed of musicians from England, um, including Dave Stewart and um, Barbara Gaskin. He actually um, plays guitar on, on their first album, which I do have, I didn't pull it. Here's another album he made with Alan Gowan, who is also in National Health before a word is said. Wonderful music. Sorry to see him go. There was, there's been quite the outpouring in the music community online um, um, honoring his passing. Once again, music musicians are the magicians of our lives. They bring so much of value that we don't get from the money grabbers and the people who are always in the news. Isn't it interesting, I say, isn't it interesting that the people who are destroying everything are always in the news. They're always the ones that have the microphone. They're the ones that have the hog the spotlight. And they're always lying. And we just go along with it. I guess we can't do anything about it. We know they're lying. We know they're not going to do anything except lie in their pockets. But we have to go along with it, right? But I wanted to say also, um, right quick, that um, regarding racism, um, it's real obvious to me that it's not going to go away in my lifetime. It's it's never going to go away. And one of the one of the one of the things that we're faced with is, if you don't know it personally, then it means nothing to you. In other words, a person who does not know the experience of being a minority, of being treated badly because <laughs> of your race, they can't, fa many people actually cannot fathom. And I have a lot of friends of many different nationalities, and I'm talking about this stuff all the time, and more so now, making people uncomfortable, which really shows the point that you get to a certain point, and unless you live it, you just can't understand it. A lot of people just really don't want to address the elephant in the room, which is un inequity, unfairness, um, racism, um, a focus, the focus being on the bottom line of profit dehumanizes us, which makes, which I think exacerbates the problem of us being able to um, come together amongst our own groups of races or community communities in our, in our countries, the different countries, and then our policies from country to country. We can't get it together. We're just, you know, you know, it's like, it really seems that the majority of people, if they can't experience it directly, they don't have, a, they don't understand. And thus, <clears throat> problems continue. For example, the whole deal that's going on now with the Me Too meme because of the Weinstein shit. We need a lot more than a meme. Me Too, Me Too. Or the meme of Black Lives Matter. Those things don't make, those things, unless there's real change, those things don't count for anything. And I'm always hoping for change, but more than likely what will happen is what's happened with What's happening with um, my direct race of people? Nothing. 
racism isn't going away. We have a president and a administration that has brought hate and division front and center again. And, and the main thing that's happening with it is people are trying to normalize it, trying to excuse it, explain it away. And then the sexual harassment stuff that's been part and parcel of, of life. Um, it's up on the table being discussed now, but is it most likely just going to be another social trend that's over as soon as some, the next big thing comes? Probably. It's dismaying to me. Which is why I always come back to music. Because music is, um, is it an escape? You can call it that. It's where I live. We live in the mind through our perceptions. Um, if there's no one, per if there's no one to observe, what is there? And intelligent people understand that our perceptions are individual. There is not this template of reality that everyone is plugged into. That that's the right way. It's all what we see through our perceptions, and so music has continues to be the most important uh, input that makes life worth living for me. Yesterday on my uh, radio show, uh, Richard Electric Jazz, I played side two of this, Mahavishnu Orchestra, Between Nothingness and Eternity. This has to be one of the most brilliant albums of musical interplay I've ever heard. Some of the most fiery exchanges and telepathic interplay of musicians I've ever heard is on this album. It just scorches at times, literally. It's it's just like it scorches. It's fantastic. Once again, folks, thanks for being with me. Thanks for being my friend. And um, I will be back. <laughs>